Hey guys, Ethereal Light Art here. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new to this channel and you like light painting, long exposure photography, or creativity, you're in the right place. Please subscribe and like, share with your artist friends, leave me a comment, I do appreciate them. Thanks for joining me on this journey. All right, welcome everyone to the next episode of Dude, Where's My Flashlight? We have the <laughs> most honored guest today. We have Frank Parasgar from Canada. Wow. Nice Frank, my representing hand. Light Excursion and the community page, Art Made of Lights. Uh, we are so inspired and thankful for your torches. Thank you. It's Thank nice you to so have much. You. Thank you so much. Honor is all mine and it's great to be here. Uh, I, I've been wanting to uh, sit down with you for quite some time. Uh, you had a tremendous amount of support and uh, recommendations oh, that you come on the show. And so oh. for this to happen is quite something for us. So thank you. It, it is a very exciting moment for me too. I'm sorry I, I couldn't make it last year. Um, there was a major, major issue going on. So you know how life is. And um, now I'm all yours. So fire away. <laughs> I, I sure do. Uh, we've all been dealing with life, especially this year. It's been off to a rocky start, but we're going to turn that around. We're still making beautiful images with your torches and your creativity your work is absolutely outstanding it, just amazing the whole community is made out of absolutely amazing talented people and we all inspire each other we all learn from one another and and we we greatly uh, thank you for all your support and what you do for us yes likewise likewise and, and along those lines I, I saw that you're approaching, if not already surpassed 5,000 followers that is quite oh that's Yes, thank you. Okay. Thanks to everyone. This is their page. This is not yes. my page. It's, it's your page. It's everyone's page. And yeah, it was a. Uh, oh, you're talking about the the community page? Four thousand. Uh, yes. Yeah, so your light excursion's almost at five thousand. I think the last light time excursion. I looked yeah. was only three or four away. And the art made of light is is growing rapidly, and yes, it should be. You. It's it's a community. Frank is built around you. It's built around your flashlights for us, designed by a light painter for a light painter. Uh, I can't tell you how happy I am that you're a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, it makes everyone to make it what it is, and everyone contributes some knowledge and talent into it, and we just, uh, you know, would you like yeah, to? Let's jump order. right into the new torches and then let's go, let's sure. take a little time travel back to the first torches. If you have all of the different ones, I kind of want to go through each different one and mm -hmm. what application specifically, Frank, uh, would a, a light painter use each one and differently why? Like tell them why they would choose the Cyclops over the Deluxe and vice versa. Yeah, um, good question, Aaron. <clears throat> one of the most popular tools in, in the light painting world. Of course, it is made by light painting brushes, all the amazing stuff that Jason makes, and we're very proud of it. A quick and easy way of connecting was, was the uh, universal connector that he makes for us. So long pipe, deluxe long pipe was originally designed to just use a long pipe and, and stick it in there and, and use a remote control for your changing your colors and whatnot. It's a very easy flashlight to use. It has a dimmer that you can adjust. And um, if you don't want to use a dimmer, you just uh, use your remote control. Um, the other flashlight is, is one of my favorite actually, is a sport model. Basically what it does, if you want to use red, it's just under your command and you instantly go to it. You don't have to search and you know through the menu and whatnot so it's right there in front of your hand also comes in a long pipe one of the uh, lenses that i make is is that pattern using a chrome reflector <laughs> and, and, a, and a projector lens in there to to come up with that light pattern it comes handy in light painting it, it gives you that light burst cyborg look and what else can i say now white flashlight as far as bright light goes, I have the T1000. So it's using an XML and XPL LEDs in there, which are using Nightcore and Surefire flashlights, military-based flashlights. They're very bright. And um, 
internal lithium ion battery, rechargeable, all the goodies. Amazing. Plug that guy in. So the red light indicates it's charging. There's a main power switch. And the good thing about it, how easy it is to hold when you're attaching a paint light brush to it. So let's say we screw in that light brush directly, the unicorn into this tool. And then it's just uh, very ergonomically friendly to hold in your hand. You can switch off the permanent switch and use the temporary one for your actions. Uh, it has different modes, strobes. I think that's amazing. And Frank, the first thing that I think of, since I am unfamiliar with the T1000 as, as, as a viewer, is I would love to put that in my hand and have the control for my calligraphy. So I've been doing a yes. lot of calligraphy lately. And I noticed that. Uh, thank you. And, and the best thing about, the only way I'm doing my calligraphy is from my uh, wow, thank you. I'm honored. And because <laughs> of this little button here, it allows me to turn on and off when I, I want to. And in my art, control is everything. Control Absolutely. is everything. And so. And that's where these things come handy. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Oh, you no, nailed it. You. Exactly that. Like, it, it's so um, uh, common to see modern bright flashlights with the aluminum black body coming out every day, um, which are great. But what about us? What about photographers, the way we hold our light brushes? You know, and it's a very small market. It's a very small community. So some of us have different, I don't know, areas that we're good at. I don't yeah. want to say talent or creativity. There's really not much into this. I just use the electrical conduit, get the LED and battery and switches and, and put it all together. And it gives us basically the tool that at any, any position and our brushes fit in here, our universal connectors fit here, our rechargeable, our favorite batteries fit in here. Yes. So it's made for light painters, like you said. Uh, this is one of my most favorite. It is actually one of my best seller and it's the light grenade. Yeah, it's fully independent, rechargeable uh, orb light. I use a combination of <clears throat> 10 millimeter and 5 millimeter LEDs for different cool. characteristics and different quality lines. Yeah, shiny ones will give you the shiny lines, and diffuse ones um, will give you more of a pastel color. Amazing. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, it's very, very compact, it's very unique, it, it's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I know there's been a couple guests on the show that have that have gotten stopped at the airport because the name is Grenade. You know, for us, it's very easy to throw this out there. It's actually quite known in the in the community as the Light Grenade. And so when you know when asked by a security TSA officer, uh, you know, and then somebody says, "Oh, I just have you know you know my little Light Grenade," and everyone's like, ah! <laughs> "Yes." Uh, officers at airport and police officers out in the field are actually very cool with what we do. They know what we do nowadays. It's amazing. I was in Jasper climbing on top of a Jeep, my favorite vehicle that I rented, and a police officer stopped right in front of me and he goes, you're not spinning fire, are you? I hope you're just spinning light. And I go like, wow, see, he knows. <laughs> and he says, all right. Yes, just light. He says, don't spin blue and red light because it's going to give the false alarm to people thinking it's a put. I said, I promise. I'll post that shot someday. He, he actually parked in there, overexposed it, but that's all good. <laughs> good memory. Uh, that's funny. Yeah, no, uh, I think naturally we're going to encounter some law enforcement or a sheriff at some point if you're out in the woods, at least a forest ranger. I have been approached countless times and honestly, 100% of the time, if you show, if you're number one, polite and respectful, like you always should be, and totally. you show them the camera, 100% of the time, they should let you go freely uh, without much trouble. Sure. Especially yeah. when they find out uh, the, the main purpose behind it is art. It's not destruction. Yeah. And, and like you said, respect goes a long way. It's a mutual yeah. thing. And my role model has been always to be kind and humble. And, and it goes around and comes around all the time. Absolutely. It's the, <laughs> one of the best life mottos anyone could could have. Um, so thank you for that. That's, uh, that's thank you, sir. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got, uh, we went through the grenades. Um, 
Each one comes with its own unique uh, controller, uh, remote controller. It's wireless. And how far is the range? Uh, should you just always carry the remote with you in your pocket? Because um, you want to maybe change something. Maybe you're walking out to your orb spot and you said, instead of a watermelon orb, I want to do a blueberry orb. <laughs> Great questions. Basically, my remote control systems are using two style of remote control. And it's very simple. The one that has all the colors on it mm. is for deluxe model. And you don't see any colors on the flashlight itself. So you choose the colors with your remote control. If you select the color, whether it's an orb or flashlight, and you're happy with it, you don't have to have the remote in your hand. I carry my remote in my hand for shutting it on and off and also changing color as I spin. Yeah. The other style is the sport model. You select the color by pressing the designated button. However, the remote control on a second stage will take over and allows you to have different dynamics and flashing and strobe modes at different uh, speed. So without the remote control, the flashlight is just under your command by this button. It's on if you press it on, and it goes off if you let it off. But with the remote, you have all those features. Yes, yes. and Frank, a personal <laughs> question, because I have the deluxe model here, and thank you. Um, yes, I've been painting welcome. my heart out with this, and I have two yes. switches. And obviously we're looking at the camera. So this is my right switch, which is the left on your frame. And uh, if you look, uh, let me turn this on, is it working? Yeah. So then I go here, it's yellow. It's, I call this one Rasta. You see this a lot in my trees. If you've seen my light trees yes. lately, I, I paint the bark. That's the Rasta color. With the Rasta color, because it gives you this nice like mix of green, red, and yellow. And when you, when you go fast enough down as making bark, those yes. colors will mix Merge naturally together. and make a bark kind of color. Wow. wow. Which is amazing. That's yeah. Amazing. So I've been using this one. But my question is, uh, what, why would I use this second button in the down position? And that way you don't have the, the three uh, extended colors like I normally would use. What is this button for? Um, that button basically uh, overrides your dimmer. If you notice here, let me just uh, take the connector off. So I have it on blue here and I have the dimmer on. Mm. By using the dimmer, I can dim it in and out. But if I shut the dimmer off, it gets brighter. Yeah. And it, the dimmer doesn't work anymore. Dimmer is like the air condition in your car. It consumes some energy and it'll never allow the batteries full potential to get your LED. Okay. So it's great to have the dimmer feature for like low, um, higher ISO shots or, ah. excuse me, or astrophotography. But if you're just a bright full output guy who never uses dimmer, you bypass it. Your system stays a lot cooler. So it kills the dimmer and doesn't work anymore. And then this other one is just your temporary and permanent. Absolutely. So you can go to any function you want instantaneously. I love it. I love it. Thank you. That's going to help me because I paint at all different uh, types of or times of the month, different full moons, no moon, uh, Milky Way, Astro. To have a low lumen uh, torch that has the variance to go to a high lumen torch uh, when yes. you're at blue hour. So I started high lumens and I worked my way down to low lumens, obviously. With your light painting is, is very inspiring. It's very intricate, actually. And now you're mixing calligraphy with it. Tell me a little bit about that and how did you get inspired, especially calligraphy in, in like in, in uh, strong languages and you're pulling it off like, wow. <laughs> uh, well, I, I am learning. Uh, I'm trying to learn Arabic as much as I can. I think it's a beautiful uh, culture and part of the world. And the more that we can be multicultural, uh, the better I think the world can be. Um, I, was in, I was inspired by like Julian Breton. Um, wow. I was inspired by Sam Mass um, yes. uh, and Mass Street Art. Those two really, Great. Great light um, artists. they really kind of have their own unique style. Uh, and I find that both of their work is, is exquisite and it's difficult. And so, uh, like we said in the last podcast, I think I'm addicted to the challenge. And if it's a challenge, I'm going to go for it. Go for it. Yeah, yes. I'm not going to go for it. I just told you. 
And and the calligraphy offers a lot of that. Um, and I haven't done a tutorial yet on my calligraphy. I, I plan on doing it. But uh, basically, a lot of the calligraphy is rolling of the wrist. Mm -hmm. So it's taking your light source and either shining it at the camera and then rolling your wrist in a twist around. Wow. And so not only yep. are you spinning the torch, you're also spinning the wrist and you're also spinning in space towards and from the camera. So now you're painting truly in free space in free with space. depth. With depth. Very nice. It, it was a really good way of explaining it. The rolling twist, it gives you the depth and 3D look. It does. Very nice. It does. I think of, um, I'm a child of the 1980s, and so I used to watch The Karate Kid. Uh, it's a very famous movie. Uh, I, like, <laughs> I like Ralph Macchio. Um, and he was told by his uh, master to paint the fence. And he was doing these wrist exercises over and over again. And if you remember, he was painting this way. He was painting this way. He was also uh, wax on and wax off. And so I keep thinking about this teaching when I'm doing my calligraphy because it's the same wrist movement, mm -hmm. um, almost like you have a paint roller in your in your hand. And so yeah. the smoother you, you move your hand and wrist, the the more like the, the corners are smoother, the gradients are a lot a lot yes. more gradual. Yes, it's very it's a very fluid way to light paint, um, and yeah. it's very freeing uh, and a challenging at the same time. So it's been one of my newest projects. Um, I've had a few. This I love week. it. I love it. <laughs> it's a work in progress, but it's 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 coming along. It's very inspiring. So we all look for new stuff, you know, and and your your work is totally inspiring. Thank you. And I see the wristbands that you're wearing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> those colors yeah. that you like. Uh, this is interesting. This is a Rasta, a red, yellow, green. Uh, and so I spent some time in Belize. I've also spent some time in Costa Rica, in the Caribbean. Wow. Um, so it's a very Rastafarian culture. Um, this, see, these are from Burning Man Festival. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Burning Man yes, Festival. I'm familiar. I'd love to go there one day and see that. I'm, it would be amazing. I went, this, this was my 10th year. Last year was my 10th time going. Um, oh, wow. And so I, I go there in the last, uh, well, I've only been light painting for about two and a half years, but uh, I've painted there for two years in a row and yeah. have, have had a really good uh, reception with the people and the citizens that also are creative and artists there. And it's yeah. been a beautiful thing to bring your community, our community here to that beautiful community. Frank, I got to ask you, you know, like between work, family, personal life, making mm -hmm. tools, and then finding ways to get outside and adventure and go make more art. How do you have all the time and energy? Like what, oh, are you eating like a bunch of vegetables? <laughs> I'm sure it just happens. It's just driven like you. Yeah. Like you, you you're gonna waste time if you sleep, right? You probably say, you know what? I shouldn't be sleeping. I need three hours and that's it. Sometimes we just burn the candle on both ends until we get, you know, um, there's always light at the end of the tunnel and you know your limitation basically. Yeah, yeah. So are there any torches, uh, sorry, we're gonna get back into the torches. Are there sure. any torches we haven't talked about? I think there's a, can we, do you have a Godzilla example um, on hand? Um, Godzilla, <clears throat> Godzilla um, was a torch. The name came to my mind just by making it. it. It's a lot of stuff that goes in here, nothing sophisticated, nothing crazy. It's just packed with a lot of wire and little electronics and switches. And you want to make sure that everything works. And you also want to make sure that a huge 18650 battery with the container, full size container, fits in here without interrupt. So it, it was mind boggling how to fit everything in there. And one day, just the scream of Godzilla came in my mind. I said, you know what? This is going to get the name Godzilla. It's just, ah, it's hard to make, but it's worth every effort. It's a very simple light. Uh, it has a two-stage switch, just like your um, sport models. Every sport model has a two-stage switch. On a front, on a stage one, is totally manual, totally manual. On a stage two is where the remote control kicks in for your dynamics and flashing. Same as in here. Uh, but the previous model Godzilla 
requested by so many light painters, like the Star Wars guy, they want to have a sword with both ends, of course. Yeah. So we were putting RGB on both ends. And then to make it more interesting, let's say yourself, you're painting something, but you want two brushes, two different colors, two different functions. So we start putting different drivers on either end of this flashlight. One was controlled by Bluetooth, was one controlled by, by one of your remote controls. So it was giving the light artist the option of having flashing different, different functions and different colors on each end. So when they were creating their artwork, they had that extra zest in their images. But now with the introduction of the T1000, all the goods, all my double-sided flashlights are just one white, very powerful, as much as bright as LED I can get in the market, yeah. I will install into our flashlights. Yes. I won't let our community and my uh, little group of uh, supporters fall behind. If they see a shiny flashlight out there with a 1200 and it only runs 45 seconds, then it has to cool off and stay off. We rather have a thousand that it stays on as long as your battery lasts. So I have added an extra inch into the length of all of these flashlights, the ones with the T1000 light. And believe it or not, it's a very advanced cooling system in here. I've used the heat sinks with different materials and it rapidly cools off the LED. It has a very hyper LED drive up to 10 watt. And it has a, as you know, your TV fraction refreshing uh, frequency is 256 Hertz. So is this, I keep up with as, as high as the speed of processor I can into our flashlights. So we're not falling behind. <laughs> I know they look very homemade. They are homemade, but functionality and the strength Durability and professionalism is all there, backed with a, uh, as you know, most of us know, uh, a very good uh, warranty. So at any time you have any issues, people know worldwide, they contact me at any given time. Uh, most of the time, issues are batteries or simple stuff. But if it's not, without any question, I'll replace your light. And and everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah, that's a huge testament to who you are as a businessman, as a light painting community leader. Um, thank you. That that goes a long ways. And that's why thank I think you. that your followers will never leave. I will always have this or more of these in, with me at all times. Honor. That That's my reward right, right there. Your, your happiness and, and you guys coming up with your magical artwork, that is a happiness. You, you mentioned something. Um, very important, very interesting. Some of uh, you gentlemen, artists or ladies, light artists, are, are seeking for that color that is hard to find. And you mentioned by tweaking your torch, you come up with that color. There's yeah. another fantastically huge inspiration in the community, Chris Bauer, as we all know him. He, uh, I love his work. He specifically requested, bingo, there you go, my friend. Now you see the color, that brown color, it yeah. says Frank, there's no flashlight that makes brown color. So you gotta make me a flashlight that does that color. So anyways, here we have a warm white made exclusive for Chris. <laughs> and he gets that color, that warm color that he wants with that flashlight. So basically Cyclops are again, a, a single lens, ball, like an eyeball with one eye. So we call it Cyclob. My wife came up with that name, Grace. An, an RG, RGB Cyclob. Let me just attach it to one of these permanent switch ones. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> this Cyclob has temporary buttons. As you're painting, let's say you're painting um, a subject, you can press these different colors and achieve your, your color that you want. And then on this side, I put that warm white for Chris. So it gives him that kind of a yellowish dark brown tone awesome. for, for creating his tree bark. As you mentioned, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another toy. This is one of my it. favorite. It's like a jewel. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> it is, they are very beautiful. Oh um, my gosh. I know, this, these guys here, they call switchback. So you probably heard me saying switchback, switchback. Basically, because we're traveling compact as photographers and we have so many gadgets, if one tool does more than what it can, it makes our life a little easier. 
instead of carrying several different uh, items that they can, you know, I try to compact. Again, if I'm just making a simple thing is already out the market, really, what am I doing? The only reason I push these products is switch back is that you can do two or three or four or even more colors with just one single head by changing different um, colors on there. So that's it. <laughs> Yeah, no, Frank, one yeah, final I question. I don't know about this stuff, whatever. This is another switchback. No, it has, um, it's a yellow base switchback. So it, it, once you spin it by itself without switching anything else on, you just get a yellow orb. Very nice, mellow yellow orb. And then you can add yellow to it, uh, blue to it, I'm sorry. And then the blue itself has a dimmer. So the ones that have a dimmer and a switch, I call them Pro Series because the astrophotographers are real critical about controlling each and every lumen of their light sure. because of high ISO sensitivity. Yeah. I have a lot of gentlemen in Australia and, and in California, a lot of ladies in California that they, basically what they request, it teaches all of us, you know, to make better lights to suit individuals. Yeah. One final question that I don't have an auxiliary jack on mine, but can you talk about the auxiliary jack and why that's so important for the next generation of, of these torches? Um, it's actually not very important. Is again, a personal choice. I don't have one right now. They sell so fast. I don't have one here that's a true M, M um, series, but this one here, um, I put it on the side, it's my own personal one. It came back um, to, to get uh, repaired. So I put an auxiliary jack in here. Auxiliary jack basically allows you to have different tools uh, as we're making them attached to it. And if you're not using the, uh, the light grenade with a rechargeable system, you can have this orb lights that they don't have internal battery with a BNC cable attached to your uh, module, or you can have cyclop or, or light bar. I have a light bar here. I can grab it and show you. Uh -huh. But that's the advantage of module. It just gives you that auxiliary um, awesome. power. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are awesome. <laughs> uh, Frank, is there any one particular, you live obviously in, in Canada, and there's, it, it's, it's, absolutely gorgeous uh natural scenic vistas gorgeous everywhere you go i was up in banff with my partner uh last oh, fall wow. i guess almost a year ago um which was just amazing in alberta um is there any place uh in particular that stands out uh that you went to that you sought out that you planned to get to and then you in executed canada? in canada that you executed a beautiful light painting once you got there and then that way we can show the audience while you maybe tell us about the adventure. I live in a city called St. Catharines. I'm 15 minutes away from the wonderful Niagara Falls. It's funny you said that because today on jazz radio, I listen to all kinds of music, but when I make the lights, sometimes I need a fast Japanese music. I'm so intrigued by them. I love the fast Japanese music and more of a traditional instruments and also jazz. And I listen to a lot of country too. Oh God, just kill me now. I love all kinds of music. My kids are musicians, jazz radio. And they said they were uh, having a question just because everybody's in a pandemic and locked in about trivia. What is your favorite Canada's uh, wonder place? So Canada has so many wonders and Niagara Falls became second, Banff became first. So Canadian Rockies are the first Canada's wonder as far as people's choice go. It's funny you said that. And Niagara Falls became second. Yeah. And that boat that you just showed me, it used to be a party boat from Toronto. I used to come to Jordan Harbor, which is uh, about another 15 minutes the other side of me. And it, it caught on fire and it sank there. And it's a part of, a, it's a part of a, like a highway tourist thing now. So okay. it just sits there. You see it every day. In, in a really harsh winters, the lake actually freezes uh, hard enough that I can go that far. And, and get on the boat or go on the ice and do some light painting. Awesome. And those look like big cracks. Were you, were you nervous about, was the ice uh, cracking? Uh, not at all. You know, okay. we all know our limitation and our, sometimes our everyday jobs are more dangerous than, than what we do for light painting. Yeah. At least you're not dealing with 
you know, restrictions of wearing harness and safety glasses and hard hat, you're free when you're light painting. Although sometimes it's dangerous, we're at the edge of the cliff or on a floating ice, wherever we are. But I think we all know our limitation yeah. and we all know our fear factor. Yeah. At the same time, is a sense of uh, serenity and freedom that you get from exercising something that you love at your element. And I think that is, is the, the, the moment that your brain gets enough particles and adjusts itself and brings you to the zone that you call, I would call, a stage of well-being. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like a lot of us chase it all over the world or it doesn't take a lot of money or space to be in a happy place. A happy place can be just in your own domain. Oh, Frank, I love this. I uh, I long for conversations like this uh, in, in, in the podcast, actually, because art for me is very spiritual. Um, it is very... Um, I'm intertwined with it, it is art is me and me and I am art. Um, and to hear other people feel like this and talk like this is really comforting. Um, it, it, well, it's a, we're not too different from each other. We, after all, <laughs> every astrophotographer will tell you we're all stardust and yeah. every mineral and, and protein and fundamentals of basic elements that we're all constructed with are basically when it comes to the quantum, <laughs> we're all brothers and sisters. We're very, very connected, like the leaves on the tree. And and I, I guess I, I'm a I'm a big fan of trees. I love trees. Oh, I, I will actually, take you a special tree. Yeah, I love. Hey, that God, the, the Winterfell tree was wow. You know the funny I thing. Know, it was amazing. The Winterfell tree you did. It brought yeah. me right to uh, episode actually three of Game of Thrones. It was perfect. Uh, you know, I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan. We haven't talked about it on the podcast. Uh, it's to the point where I actually uh, make a big lamb and everyone uh, pulls off the lamb and we have ale. <laughs> I wear big fur coats. I have oh, you know, wow. I have a bunch of things from Burning Man that, that fit nicely into the Game of Thrones. Genre. I can't wait until I see it. I, hopefully everything opens up and I can come down the States and see you guys again. I would love to. You know, you mentioned Chris Bauer. He taught me pretty much everything I know. Um, I owe my light painting uh, process and uh, maybe maybe purity in my in my way of doing things. Um, I owe him everything, and so hats off to him. He's one of the best uh, people, not only just light painters, but he's just a genuine, awesome human being. I find everyone to be wonderful. So far, you know, like some people say, oh my God, you don't charge before you send the light. I said, no, this is my honor system. Yeah. And that's how we get connected to each other. You know, like you, you want to rip me off for a light? I don't think anyone would. No one has. No, but sure. a lot of people are shocked when they hear that. You're not charging up front. I said, no, I want you to receive your light and be happy with it. And if you have any question, then, like you said, you know, it, it's a harmony that bring this together right it is it is we're, we're connected by light i get a lot of questions um yeah. i'm not a i'm not a front person as as you can tell a little bit of self-confidence of course but that's natural i don't have your looks <laughs> but anyways a lot of people have asked me to do a video on how to spin orbs or put saturns on now that you broke the ice and actually convinced me and this computer hasn't exploded yet that i've been sitting in front of it for a while so if if you would like me to um, to briefly show how, I, I would love I, to. I would love to, Frank. And then before you stand up, can you actually uh, just uh, verbally walk us through the process before you see it? So then we can actually maybe list it out on the screen. And sure. then and then Frank. Secondly, I want uh, more of a personal question to you. What are you telling yourself? What do, what 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 kind of things are you just telling Frank? Not about technical. I got to, you know, keep my elbow. I want to, I want to go over the way to do it, but I want to know what you're telling yourself as an artist. Mm -hmm. And so is there something special that you're telling yourself? Are you taking a deep breath? Uh, walk us through the process before you spin this oil. Wow. These are deep questions. You're a deep person. <laughs> you yes. get inside people that. Well, that's, um, I think at the beginning, 
you know, a lot of process goes through your head, regardless of what you do, exercising your passion, whether it is, is this thing or, or drawing. But after a while, you become accustomed to it and comfortable with it. Um, I think you just uh, try to time it and perfect it. Mm -hmm. After you, you've done it, you, you want to make it better and, and you're yeah. trying to perfect it. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, can you go through some well, technical yeah, steps? Yeah, I'll walk you through it. Yeah. This uh, light grenade, uh, I spin them with a with a rope. Right now, I've switched to pedal rope. Very simple connection, and I use a a, a very um, easy to buy skipping rope, and I modify. So I run my rope through there, and I put three little screws in there to even make it tighter and 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 harder to pull off. So under no circumstances, this is going to come loose, because you guys have spent a lot of money on this thing, and I put a lot of time and effort. It takes me about two and a half hours to make this and you pay a very good money for them. Yeah. And we don't want to lose them or hit ourselves. So I make that very strong. Basically, uh, when I start spinning, uh, I try to concentrate on my wrist position. Mm. Um, often what I, uh, what I tell people what, what is the best technique to use is uh, basically adjust your axis. Make sure the orb is it is straight up and down and to do that I suggest a large window outside and stand sideways and spin so you can see the light just going up and down okay. uh, now if it's tilted you can tilt your wrist back and forth to make minor adjustments and I'm going to demonstrate quickly it's a lot easier to use the message all right so remote control first of all it's activating with the remote. And Frank, can you tell us the camera settings so people understand where to start? Of course. <clears throat> right now, I'm using a Canon 16 millimeter on it to basically cover the, uh, the field of view. I have my ISO at 160. I'm not sure if you see there the room. Yeah. And then I have my aperture at f11 okay. in 30 seconds. So we're going to do an orb for 30 seconds. But one other thing I was going to show you, <clears throat> can you hear me from here? Yes, perfect. Okay, I made a little uh, plus mark on, on the ground here. I'm not sure if you see, but anyways. So this is the length of my orb. And let's say I want to do a Saturn. I have an extension here that you can make very easily with a dog leash and again, a skipping rope. And I just made it shorter. Uh, so you calculate the size of your orb and the distance that you want. So you add this extension that the ring doesn't end up right around the orb like a belt. You want it to be a little bit farther out. So I'm just going to hang this around my neck, have it handy. We're going to do a fast rush, 30 second spin. Okay. I'm going to try to finish the orb in 20 second ish. Okay. Go around all the, go 180 degrees and then put my extension on and do the ring. All right. And you're going to help me out. All right, let's do that. So I'm going to kill the light, make sure everything works. Have my camera on timer. Okay. Here we go. So I'm going to change color as I'm spinning, just to give you a multicolor orb. I'm going to try to rush through this so we can finish it in 180 degrees. Off. Very quickly, put my extension on. Ooh, hurry up, hurry up. Don't hit the TV. <laughs> okay, here we go. I still have a couple of seconds, I think. I think we made it. Nice. All right, let's see. Hey, oh, there. yes. Can you I see that? That looks awesome. awesome. That worked out good. Oh, red ring. So that's how I'm going to do it with the lights on so you guys can can see if you want. OK, cool. Yeah, no, um, you know, a lot of people use different markers for the ground. Um, I've actually learned from Chris Bauer that we use little stick em stars like the kids have in their room for uh, stars and planets. They, they stick on them. Yes. Those work great, and they're never in the shot. I never have to worry about them being too bright, so you actually yeah. ever see them. So those are a great uh, way. 
again, like you said, you can improvise if you're outdoor with a lot of seagull droppings, pick the one that you're not gonna, <laughs> or dandelion comes handy. Um, a lot of time we're spinning at the edge of the ocean or lake with a heavy current. I find a bigger rock works better. Uh, here I just made a plus mark on the ground. Yeah. So I'm gonna quickly demonstrate how I do my Saturn rings. Do you have time? Of course, we'd love this, thank you. Um, one important thing about spinning orb is I start square to the camera, which means if you do one spin, you're gonna get one circle. That's a square to it. It's very important, Aaron, to start square to the camera, and I explain why. So let's say if you start here, when you finish your orb, you're going to have inconsistent heavy lines in some other part of your orb that, you know, it doesn't look smooth and consistent. Yeah. So by starting square to the camera, we can hide a lot of those start and stop or wobbles into the outer rim and the front of the whole thing stays very smooth. So here we go. And I change the color as I spin. So I go one, two, three step, and then change the color. One, two, three step, and change the color. One, two, three. Basically, I walk backwards. Some people walk forward. It's important to, it's important to have that mark, have that orb right over top of the mark here. And this is my position right here. I hold my wrist beside my hand and I start spinning. Here, have a quick look. You see the thing is tilted this way? Yes. This way is tilted that way. Yes. It's important to keep, to keep this going up and down straight. Now, if I tilt my wrist forward, my orb is going to have a tilted axis. So when they say, Work on your axis is important to have your wrist position memorized to get those off. So, anyways, when I'm done the complete or I have the extension, getting my position. So we want the spinning position to be halfway around the or right about there, and I tilt it a little bit to get that little effect. I'm gonna shut it on and off. <laughs> that's and that's how it uh, Frank, can you speak to your elbow position and are you anchored into your hip? Yes, I am. Okay. <clears throat> you become a little machine. <laughs> you become a little machine. So I tuck my elbow in here because if the elbow wobbles in and out, you're going to have, you're increasing and decreasing the size of the uh, orb. So basically, I lock my elbow in here and I keep my wrist in a position that I can see right through to my marker. So I just let it hang like that and that's my spinning position. I love it. Some people walk forward, my wife walks forward. She used to, but I like to go backwards and take little tiny, little tiny steps. And do you think it's smart to uh... Uh, track or plan your uh, circumference around your mark? Do you feel like you maybe, instead of going around it if <laughs> evenly in a 360 or 180, you kind of float away from the mark and next thing you know, you've got an egg instead of, you you know, that's happened. So. Yes, then it, it, won't be a it won't be a perfect sphere anymore. It will be a different shape, of course. Okay. One other thing I want to run by, a lot of people ask, how do you spin the uh, module system? Okay. So the M series with the auxiliary jack, I simply use a universal connector, the orb head, and I just run it through here. <clears throat> These rubber pieces are very easy to hold. And they have a large mouth and a very forgiving rubber that the BNC cable can easily travel and spin around it and let the swivel head <clears throat> freely spin on there. I'm using this uh, uh, system right now because I'm sold out of all the other ones. I hold that in my hand, go on market, and I just spin it like that. Very easy spin. Yeah. And that universal connector just guides the cable. You don't kink it, you can increase it, you can pull it back and have a smaller orb. If you want, I'll demonstrate one with this too. Sure, that's great. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Let's kill the lights. I don't know. 
Smaller or kind of fast off, increase the length of the cable, go to the ring position, and off. This is going to be a dimmer one, they're not as bright as the RGB. It looked great. Uh, everything I saw, uh, it's funny. I never actually get to be a spectator. I'm always the one painting. And so yes. a lot of a lot of people that I paint for or with are often telling me we love the actual act of doing it as much as the final uh, photo because it's beautiful to watch lights uh, spinning in the air. It's amazing. <laughs> yep. A lot of people love it. And some of the comments I get a lot of time, they're very therapeutic. So what they do, nice and yeah. I love it. I love it. I love <laughs> Me too. It. It's a great thing. I love it. I love it. I was always, I knew, I, I kind of tried to figure out how to do the Saturn. Um, I'm one of those artists that uh, I'm a little bit shy, honestly, when it comes to asking the artist of how they did something. Because oh, I, please don't be. Oh, oh, no. God. I'm shy just being up front. Like I, I shot weddings and I, I guided like the 20, 30 drunk people and made them smile and kept them online. But, you know, on this side of the camera, I, I'm not I'm not your guy. <laughs> but thank you. You you broke the ice. This is actually the first time ever I've been filmed or interviewed. I always refuse them. It's just um, I'm we're, very, I'm very shy and humble when it comes to that, 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 that regard. So we're so you. lucky and thankful that you decided to do this. Uh, it's amazing. I really wanted to sit down and, and talk to you. And I think especially in these times of quarantine, when there is social distancing in place, <laughs> and we aren't as connected. We aren't meeting up and doing more light paintings like normal, um, you know, and this feeling of this connection really uh, is mitigated with a podcast. Um, every time that I see oh. your work now, every time I see I pick up this flashlight, I will be thinking about you and I'll be thinking about our time together. Thank and you. that's really what this podcast is about, is to get to know these products and to get it's to know great. us as artists. Yes, and you bring a lot of amazing people together. And, and yeah, I've enjoyed listening. I've had the opportunity to actually uh, watch a couple of your podcasts last year, and they're incredible. Thank very, you. Uh, yeah, very educational, too, actually. Each one has its own unique, you know, um, a learning curve, which is very good. It does. It does. I really try to make sure that it's uh, a little bit uh, get to know the artist as well as learn some things because there's a lot of people out there that are just getting into this. As you well know, that this art form is expanding rapidly. Um, in fact, there's probably a bunch of reasons. Uh, actually, can you comment on why do you think this is so popular now and, and it's, it's gaining popularity uh, all the time? Well, photography have always been a great escape for for um, for the least amount of effort, at least, or or dependability to to go and be in our own passion and element. You know, photography has allowed individuals of all walks of life uh, and culture to be able to see the world the way they want to and capture it. But now. <clears throat> With the light painting community and long exposure expanding, people that like to exercise photography as, as, as a getaway from the everyday thing and just go in their own zone, they said, okay, I, I would love to shoot birds and now it's too dark for birds or it's the wrong season. I would love to, show, to shoot snowflakes, but it got too warm. It, it just gives us another um, a chapter, another huge library of books and books that you can just go indulge yourself. So if you love photography and you love art, it, it basically gives you that, that, that potential and opportunity to, to use lights and colors and movements and techniques of photography to produce something interesting looking. Yes. And say that is, is, you know, is a, a reflection of my inner soul. It is. Sort of. 
I, I totally understand you, and thank you for saying that. I, I couldn't agree thank more. You. I couldn't agree more. Frank, where do you see uh, where do you see yourself in five years as a light painter, as a tool manufacturer? If, if we could fast forward the clock five years, where are we? Hopefully retired. <laughs> Let's help you get there. <laughs> I'm old. I'm over 50 years old. I'm over half a century old. I've seen so much and traveled a lot. And getting up and going to work is, is not, is a privilege. But sometimes you say, you know what? Uh, it would be nice to get up and do what you wanted to do, not chasing the money to pay the bills. Mm. And if we play our cards right, a human life force is very strong and is a long life. Although we all like to be in that stage of well-being, the stage of well-being costs money and it requires stuff that to feed it, whether it's food, whether it's drugs or alcohol or music or, or anything that makes individual to be in that stage of well-being doesn't just come free or doesn't fall on your lap. Even if it's light painting, you you move a few lights around, you still have to do that initiative and have the due diligence of applying. I don't know much in life, but the very little that I do know, I apply it. And I think that's the key. If we actually use uh, our humanity and life force to apply what we know, what we have learned and what others have teach us, and we can uh, be an um, an important element of this massive working machine together and, and our rewards would be the establishment that results your happiness and freedom in the future, hopefully. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's yes. Beautiful. beautiful, beautiful. Frank, uh, let's, let's jump in the time machine and let's go back to the first days of you light painting. What would you tell yourself if you could time travel and whisper your in your year? When you first started out light painting, what would you tell yourself you know now that you didn't know then? Aaron, you have no idea. The first light painting I did, I was 13, 14 years old. And I didn't even know I'm light painting. What happened, I, I was a kid that when people glue popsicle stick together at the school, me and these couple of other buddies were making transistor radios, amplifiers, walkie-talkies, talking to each other. And one of the things I always liked was making flip-flop with LEDs. I learned so much about transistors. So I knew if you add a semiconductor or transistor PNP and another one together with two LEDs, a couple of transistor, a couple of capacitors, I would have them flipping and flopping. I would have them flashing. My very first flash, I used to buy these $5 shoes with a thick sole and put a nine volt battery and two LEDs coming out of them. And kids used to buy them at school back in 70s, 80s, yeah, taking them to the mountain so they can see them flashing. So electronics has always been a passion and photography always been a passion. Of course, you know, Canada with all this vast, beautiful nature, you know. So now combining them together is, is actually a, a good opportunity. And I'm grateful that I can. As I said, I don't know much, but what I do know in my life, I try to apply. If you don't apply yourself, if you don't use what we have, you know, it, it's a waste. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, again, that's maybe one of the main goals of, of for me with this podcast is to teach people light painting and teach people about the tools we use. But really, I want to unlock their own personal creativity. Yes. Um, I want them to come up with their own techniques and I want them to use a household item like Jason Reinhardt does and and learn yes. you can mix and match a thousand or million, a quadrillion different yes. things to produce mm -hmm. a unique effect that fits you. Um, and I think that's what, that's what light painting really is to me is, is going into the void of nothingness and coming out with something, you know, and, and something and with colorful something. and beautiful and bright. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. Like yeah. a calligraphy. You go in the dark and then you create that magic. It's, uh, it's, it's fun. It's fun. It's liberating. Um, you know, it's, cool. it's, it's pure, happiness it's pure happiness and i guess that's what we're all seeking for mostly energy and happiness in this life what's wrong oh i got no energy you know everyone's always seeking for that energy whether it's deeper breathing or some kind of so light painting motivates us to to get up and and 
do that stuff. <laughs> and to share it and to share it with others and to teach uh, the new light painters and to commune with older light painters and, um, you know, talk about where the art form is going. Um, and, you know, uh, that's important because people that have done this for over five years, I think it really was a big bubble burst about five years ago. Um, and then it's kind of just exponentially grown from there. But uh, Frank, can you talk a little bit about how light painting has changed? Not maybe from when you were a kid, but from when maybe like 10 years ago, have you seen it change? Major change actually. It started yeah. off by basically people like you said, making homemade stuff and, you know, like moving it around and experimenting with different colors and shapes of plastic, the, what the light, uh, you know, can have, what kind of effect the light can have on the camera. And <clears throat> the demand for some smart people to come up with things like that, like you know, like Jason says, you know what, I think if I make a permanent piece of plex plexiglass, and shine light through it, you'll, you'll do this for you, or you can just have it on strobe and make leaves with it, or, or a bonnet bowl, or, you know, Sasquatch or stuff like yes. Chris makes. Yeah, so, yeah, it's constantly evolving. Manufacturers are coming out with more, you know, sophisticated tools and flashlights, basically allowing us to exercise our art a little farther. Yeah, and I yeah. think it'll continue to grow. Of course, everything has a plateau. You don't want to get bored out of something. You have to keep it interesting, right? Uh, yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. But speaking of interesting, uh, let's talk about the breath of fire. Uh, you've been expanding a little bit into blowing. Uh, and uh, what? Can you tell us what? Fire breathing. Yes, fire breathing. Can you can you talk to us about the journey? You just started this, but what's been working? What's not working? How do you do it? Is it safe? How do we stay safe? Can you can you talk a little bit about all that? I sure can. Yeah. Like everything else, I, I'm a very spontaneous person and I get bored real quick just because my life is in such a high speed. Like you said, that the job itself, being a welder and construction welder, will build heavy construction stuff. So it's very intensive, interesting at the same time. And light painting, like I mean, how many orbs I can spin or <clears throat> I, I had a bit of a, a health issue a couple of years ago to the point that I'm very thankful this is the second chance in, you know, in life for me. So every day of it is a gift. It's been a gift since day one. Life is just a wonderful pressure, a precious thing that you don't want to miss every any sunrise or any sunset as much as you can. We miss them, but we try not to. However, in this fire breathing stuff, just something, you know, I work with fire all the time. I'm a welder. I use torch all the time. And I thought it'd be interesting to, uh, again, Game of Thrones, the dragon in Game of Thrones. It, it's all, it's all a part of it. I, I don't know. I, I just said, you know what, babe, I'm going to go breathe fire because I, I want more excitement in, in, in my photography and I want to be able to do something different. So I start experiment with different fuel, talk to a few fire breathers. Unfortunately, I can't really share the type of fuel mix that I use, particularly because I'm not really good at it yet. Yeah. Also for the medical reason, God forbid, if anything happened, if it shows any kind of a reaction in someone that they said, oh, Frank was saying use this and this, and I used it and now I have a heart attack or now I have this issue. So it is a personal thing. There's yeah. no safety cap on it. It can get extremely dangerous. Or if you play it safe, there's nothing into it. Yeah, great. Well, the few images I've seen have been spectacular. Uh, oh, thank you. I, I have to work on a technique. The last one, I look like I got man boobs. I'm getting all that. Yeah. Our, our job is near this amazing donut shop. It's called Granddad's in Hamilton. Aaron, they make these donuts just to die for. And when I when I was sick, I couldn't hold a lot of things down. Chicken noodle soup and donuts was like my main food. And and, and look at me, this is this is what I have to deal with. <laughs> it, it's big. And in a fire painting, I noticed everybody's fit. Everybody's like a model. 
I'm an old guy. I don't wear costumes, so I have to, uh, you know, kind of work on my diet a little bit <laughs> as far as the showmanship end of it goes. Uh, it's an interesting thing. I want to basically the fire itself is also a very important element in in the Zartosh culture. I was born in Iran. I don't have any particular religion. My mom is Christian. I married a Catholic a Christian lady, so I love her. I love all our children. But there's certain elements of fire or elements in the nature. Fire being one of them, giving us the heat that we need and you know in every time you breathe the fire it, it forms different characters different I, I can't describe it you have to see it for yourself and being that close to your face you know it does different things the sound of it so yeah. I want to get good at that I want to get get good at capturing it the way I see it in there and that's going to be a little bit of a challenge yeah, uh, and maybe we can talk about uh, technical camera settings. Every time I'm playing with fire, I've, I've done recent some fire work. Um, I am at f11 minimum. I'm at f11 wow. minimum. Um, and which means That's a learning process for me because you've done the Burning Man. You've dealt with fire a lot more than I have. And I yeah. want to capture it. So this yeah. is good. So too. F11 uh, is probably a good place, a middle ground to start. Maybe even F13. It depends on how, like if you're spinning a fire orb, that's going to take a lot longer than just a two second uh, burst from your mouth. Right. Um, so obviously your aperture is going to be dependent on how long exposure you're going to use. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah. I know. <laughs> Shutter speeds. Well, and so on this one, this might be even best to do a bulb uh, bulb mode where you can actually press uh, for one second and release when okay, you're on. ready. Um, yeah. And that's very dependent on you. So it could be yeah. one second. It could be one and a half or two seconds, depending on what you want. Exactly. I got to get good at that because I'm holding the bottle with fuel in it and then I'm holding a, a rod or a stick with a torch to have the available pilot light. Yeah. And then when I put that fuel in my mouth, I, I really don't have a free time. So I have the camera on tripod or on a timer. I have to work on these techniques. It's always helpful to have the second person yes. or have somebody with you. Then they yeah. can capture multiple shots and higher speed maybe. I, I remember one time I was talking, you put an order in for the light. We didn't know much, each other much back then. And I contacted you. I said, the light is ready. And I think I contacted your mom by mistake. Or you said, send me to my house. I'm away for two and a half months. You were traveling South America forever. Yeah. And I said, God, that, no, that is a dream job. You know, I want this guy's job. <laughs> I said, it, wow, it, travel and do what you love. Uh, oh, buddy. Thank you. Know. you. It, 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 is a, it is a privilege. It is an honor. My heart is overflowing with gratitude for this opportunity. And it's really a choice. It's not always easy. Um, life on the road is not easy. Um, no. Not making a lot of money um, at this. I make some, but I'm, I'm not making a lot. And that's that's that can be hard sometimes. Um, it's a constant struggle, Frank, between how do you value your art? You know, is it how many prints you're selling? Is it the technical execution? Is it the amount of creativity that went into the new idea that you birthed into the world? Yes. All of these things are important, um, mm -hmm. you know, and in traditional society, it's always like, okay, well, especially in this country, how much money do you make? What do you do? You know, and it's about material things versus how many beautiful ideas have you created into the world that other people can enjoy, other people can learn from, Perfect. is really yes. priceless. Yes, totally, totally. Unfortunately, we all need the element or substance of money to survive. But when we can do what we love and make money off of it, of course, that that is the, the goal right there. It's, it's, it's not, both yeah. Inspired, yeah. You it's, work hard at it and you're doing fantastic, my friend. Keep it up, you're doing great. Nothing good comes easy, but hard work 99% of the time pays off, especially if it's directed in the, in the right direction. Absolutely. Yep. And I, and I really try to paint um, from a place of creativity and uh, not ego. I know I've talked about this in the first season that some people are really upset about how many likes they get on Instagram and what the kind of response is. And, you know, I, I always, uh, I was lucky enough to 
maybe convince myself that that wasn't important to me. And my art, uh, if it, if it, if I'm passionate about it, you're happy with it. There's people out there that will be too, and that means yes. everything to me. Yeah. And you have a good taste. If you're happy with it, you know darn sure people love your work. They they love it too, because you put a lot of effort into your work, and and we love it too. Thank you. Always Thank looking you. forward to your magic. You're welcome, my friend. Thank it's you. Thank you. the good thing about you. Not only you have a good taste, you also have a very honest and open mind about. Uh, you know, being being the, the judge and the critic of your own creation. Mm. Because you said if you're happy with it, then other people are happy with it too. So that that proves your high standard and you've done your research. Your heart and soul, your mind have, have done their research. They are satisfied with what you produce. Because even if you put ego as, as a part of a judgmental thing or the money, Oh, I make so much money off this, but is it beautiful, really? Is it made you happy, or you did it based on, you know, a, a contract or something, right? Yes. But if you're, like you said, your mind, you, you're happy with it, that means your heart and soul and your vision that's seen the in that international industry of that particular thing you do, and then they say, you know what, that belongs into that sector, and your work belongs to the elite sector. And that's where that internal satisfaction comes from. Oh, thank you. Wow. No one's ever said that before. Oh, that's great. It's true. It's true because if, if you, you, ha you have a high standard and you're pleased with something that you produce and the results are shown how many people love it, you're in the right track. Yeah. Like, no doubt. Let's leave that behind. We're in the right track. Let's continue doing that. Yeah. You know? No, I agree. I agree. And, and honestly, it makes it kind of, uh, it, it, it's a good challenge, but also it's a good reward when something happens uh, that works out that you planned a little bit and you worked hard at it. And it's like, wow, you can, you can yeah. celebrate that. You can be happy and proud of that moment and start working on the next one. <laughs> exactly. Keep doing it. <laughs> You're doing a great job. One. Like this podcast itself, this, this yeah. can have a huge opportunity, potential, you know, opportunity for, for connecting people with the right questions and the right answers together. And regardless of the subject, it seems like podcasts are, are the way of connecting people interested in particular subject around it. So yes, yeah, I'm not, I hope that this podcast continues to grow. Um, you know, at some point I'm going to interview, I'm trying to interview every single light painter out there. If anyone wants to be on the show, just send me a message. If anyone wants to nominate or suggest somebody, I'm all ears. I would love to talk to anyone at any level. Doesn't matter if you've been doing this for two weeks or if you've been doing this for 20 years. If you make tools, if you don't buy tools, if you make your own tools at home, I want to talk to all those people because I can yeah. tell you right now, I've done all of it except manufacture commercially these flashlights, which is obviously your expertise. Absolutely. Frank, have you thought about your one or two songs that you oh, would God. like to add to the music list because we're gonna we're sort of wrapping up the podcast and I've got to get these in there. Yeah, you don't have to answer. It's not a forced question. Like, is it the song that I would suggest it would be good for light painting? Honestly, it's it's the song that most inspires you, and it doesn't have to be during light painting. It could be in the morning while you're doing your morning routine or coffee or while you meditate or. Or why you're light painting? It could be anything. I like Jake Bike. I like Slumville Sunrise and by Jake Bike. So okay, the guitar cool. riff that it's crazy. And and he's he's a he's a artist from UK. And, and you know a lot of good songwriters and musicians came from UK. He's a younger artist, and his songs are just so down to earth and speaks to you. He, he speaks about his little town or another good song is a path of a lightning bolt by again, Jake, but I, I, I love his work. Okay. So he's, <laughs> um, old stuff. We can all talk about Zeppelins and Floyds and, and Scorpions and priests and go on and on about rock bands. Fantastic. Tremendous yeah. number of great art out there. Yes. Yes. But like I said, I, I listen to all kinds of music. And that's it. I love it. I, I love it. Yeah. On your latest image with a tube, there are lines that go on to infinity, yeah. to the sky. <laughs> I'm not going to ask secretive or technical questions that might put you in a spot to answer. It, it is a very 
unique and interesting technique. I have no idea how you did it, but it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank it's you. Really um, you know, it's funny. Every time I post on social media, or at least I try to, if I'm not super busy, I really try to explain uh, what I did and what my camera settings are. And I'm, I'm really, yeah, thank you. It, it's, it well, turned I out amazing. These um, lines are just like crazy. It, it was, it was a mix of a prism that I, I added to the lens. So I, there's a prism and in the middle of the prism, level? yes. In the middle of the prism, it is uh, flat and clear. So the model will stay the same. And around the edges, there is the prism. And so it looks almost like an eyeball with a with a, yes, a clear does. part in the middle. And then there's a iris around it. Thank you very much for sharing that. Wow. A lot went into that shot. And the results are outstanding. Thank you. Pretty yeah, nice. I credit uh, the prism work to, to Dan uh, Roberts. It's Hack the Light. Dan he used to be called Dan Chick. He got recently mm -hmm. married to Reagan, and so now he's Dan Roberts. And he was on season one, and in episode eight, he went through all of the prisms, and it's piqued my interest. Watch for him. And uh, I dedicate that one to him. Yeah. It's very nice of you. And the stone hinges you did with the fire. Wow, that was a... That Thank was a you. Very... If you look close in that in that photo, um, she actually really does look like she's levitating because <laughs> she does. <laughs> because we, that that is a fire levitation uh, full shot, Frank, and that that a lot of people honestly really don't understand the complexity of this shot. So I was I was on a ladder behind her. And then once once I did the steel wool, I had to do the steel wool exactly the diameter of the ring. Of the ring, so it doesn't because look. Thing. So so then I could hide the steel He's wool. perfectly like lined up with it. Honestly, uh, Frank, if I'm being extremely transparent, it it is it does take some skill. I did not measure the diameter or the radius between the middle of the suit. I just guessed, but I, it was really lucky. This one, this whole night was a magical night. I'm sure you've had them where just everything seems to work. lines up and falls in place. And so. It was an amazing. Uh, it was an amazing night. I had uh, actually more help on set than I usually do, and that really, really helps. Um, right. You know, I had I had Katie May, who you uh, had a chance to quickly meet. Yes, uh, pleasure she, meeting her earlier. She helps me uh, lens cap the the camera. So when yeah, uh, I when use that we, technique a lot actually. Yeah, and so she's she's at the camera, and then. Uh, the model's boyfriend uh, deals with a lot of fire. He's a professional fire uh, dancer, and so nice. he brought he brought the fire. He brought the safety. Um, he helped me move the ladder away. Um, okay. So to have help is uh, really key. And again, that's it why you want to yeah. work with more people. The more the merrier. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, the more the merrier. The more the merrier. Well, Frank, it's been an amazing conversation. I it's can't been incredible. Say thank you, thank you so much. Uh, sharing this I art form, so this beautiful passion um, between us and everyone else in the community has been such a gift. Um, so thank you so much. We can find thank your you so work. so much for doing this podcast and bringing everyone together. It's thank a big you. learning process. Uh, any any websites or anything that uh, we're gonna put a, we're gonna put links to all of the torches in the in the description so people can click right on there if they'd like to buy okay. any of these well, torches they can go right there. I've been a photographer forever, so I had a studio and I did wedding photography for a long time. I shot for World Wildlife Fund Canada, did the wildlife and nature. So I have a website called uh, PhotoExcursion.com. Okay. And that's my everyday photography, photoexcursion.com. And then light excursion basically is for the light painting stuff. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank and you so I'll much. I'll create a website too. You have to have a solid website. I have a really good web guy, but life, life got busy. And I have to produce him with some material that he can attach to the website and make it more professional. Yeah. And, and it is a growing thing. And I'm learning as I go as well. We all are. Hopefully, I can make uh, the lights to suit your needs, and uh, yeah, your happiness is my reward. I couldn't be happier, Frank. Like I said, I don't leave my house. I don't think about light painting without your torch in my bag or all of your torches. In I'm my honored. Bag. I'm honored. I'm extremely ex like happy and rewarded by by you saying that. So. 
pick one. <laughs> um, actually, even tonight, if you want, I will send them your way as, as, a, as a token of our appreciation from the whole, all of us in community. I'm sure everyone would, would agree. It's from my behalf and everyone else, and, and we'll send you a light to, to continue creating your magic for us. Are you interested on in a new T1000, the, the bright I, ones? Yeah, I think the T1000 has got my interest. I cannot wait to get into more complex calligraphy um, and add that into some of my nature scapes. A uh, mix of both would be... So a T1000, I think, is my choice. Because I think a couple of months ago you put an order through, but then things, yeah, because of the pandemic, things got changed. Yeah. And, uh, you know what? For sure, I have to make an exclusive light for you. Oh, I would love that. I would be honored. I would be I dedicate honored. that to, to, uh, to Aaron. <laughs> I am so honored, Frank. Again, I can't say thanks enough. Um, oh, my friend, thank you so much for, for giving us the opportunity. You're welcome. I'll talk to you soon. Pleasure all mine. Thank you so all much. Right. Have a wonderful Thanks, time. Okay, cheers. Ciao.